So this is a deep dive into bunions. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because I have a bunion and I have decided after many, many years to actually have it uh, looked at by an orthopedic surgeon and I'm gonna have surgery on it. And I'm gonna take you through the full journey. So you're gonna meet my surgeon, you're gonna see the surgery, uh, and then you're gonna see my recovery. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I think it's really, really important. Um, it's a massive condition that affects so, so many people. Um, and I think it's one of those things that people sort of hide away from. It doesn't have to um, cause you pain there are people out there that can help and this technique I've spent a lot of time looking at and researching so this is minimal invasive bunion surgery um, it's done by one of the leading experts in the UK Dr Kuna Singham uh, the guy's a legend so this is my surgery and my recovery uh, so I hope you enjoy boom hi there so my name's Kumar Kuna Singham I'm an orthopedic surgeon a medically qualified doctor and also qualified in surgery I'm going to talk to you today about keyhole bunion surgery, hashtag keyhole bunion surgery. So I learnt uh, the technique of keyhole bunion surgery uh, when I was on my fellowship in Australia. Uh, a fellowship is when you qualify as a doctor and then you do your orthopaedic or surgical training and you go away to another country if you're lucky enough, get selected onto a, a wonderful fellowship like I was uh, with several different fellowship instructors, one of whom is Peter Lamb, who's an absolute legend in the world of keyhole bunion surgery uh, based out of Sydney, Australia, which is a wonderful place to visit if you haven't done so and it's got some incredible medical professionals there as well. Uh, so it's really delighted to learn this technique, which is um, tissue sparing, um, getting people back to activity really, really quickly. Uh, that's the sort of goal, that's my mentality, less is more. So, what is keyhole bunion surgery? This is the ability to utilize tiny cuts or small cuts to break the bones either side of the big toe joint, putting them to a better alignment, so a little bit more straighter, still foot shaped, and then locking them with screws. Surgery done, all I remember is feeling this really cold sensation in my arm and then boom, out for the count. Uh, but yeah, Dr. K, genius. Surgery is now finished. I am, and now I'm strapped up like it's going out of fashion. But um... So the surgery itself is um, performed under a general anaesthetic. Uh, I do a local anaesthetic block as well, so hopefully the patient will wake up with uh, more of a numb feeling of the foot, so less pain in the foot. The technique itself, as I mentioned before, is tissue sparing. So I'm not stripping tissue all around the bone to get around to and down to it. I'm um, trying to utilize these small cuts to break it, hence the tissue sparing element. And that, by definition, should cause less pain as well. So that's sort of bring it together with less pain before surgery, during surgery, and then after surgery. What do you expect after surgery? This is really important. Um, I expect you to be able to walk out after surgery. So, um, day case surgery, as I mentioned before, but you're walking on your feet immediately afterwards with all of your weight. It's so a full weight bearing. There's a flat strappy shoe, not a thick offloading shoe, so that you're not off balance. Okay, so it's not going to affect your hips or your knees or your back. So ideally you're roughly in balance, as close as I can get to balance as possible. There is a bandage that I put on after surgery. I wrap this as snugly as possible. If it's too tight, it can cause pain or blistering. If it's too loose, you can see a bit of bleeding. So it's a bit of a compromise, but I achieve that or try to achieve it best possible when I'm in surgery itself. Um, the bandage has got to be kept dry for two weeks. So generally speaking, you keep the bandage on for two weeks. Giles and I have worked on experiments to take bandages down a little bit earlier, and this is possible. So if there's an indication to take it down a little bit earlier, debelt and get back in shoes, I'd be delighted to do so. Not everyone's the same, so hence I've tried to make it more of a general um, post-optic protocol for ease of transparency for patients and people looking after them as well. Um, I do give you crutches after surgery, I think it's really important, just for balance and support, just in case, you know, for the first couple of hours you can feel a bit wheezy after surgery, uh, you might feel a little bit of pain in your foot, it just, just helps a little bit, but I'd be delighted if you drop these even as you walk out of the hospital. So there's no mandatory need to take these to take off weight, yeah, it's really, really important. Really, I give it to patients to keep people away. When you have foot surgery, it's, it's, it's easy for other people to not see that you've had this done. So you know, people can walk into you, you're on public transport, etc. And I want you to get going. I don't want you to be bed bound with your feet up in the air. So it's just really, really nice to have something to keep people away. And hence, that's the, um, the reasoning behind the crutches. So, day two, <coughs> post-operative. Um, actually, to be honest, it's not too bad. Um, I'm currently, like my foot is still really, really strapped up at the moment. So as you can see, it's pretty freaking bad. And underneath the toe, 
um, I've started to get a little bit of blood leaking. Um, but I spoke to the doctor about that yesterday and he said, listen, don't worry about it. You're gonna experience a little bit of, of, of blood. Uh, so it's, it's just basically the pressure of walking and sort of getting used to it. And also they're giving me these like special, special shoes to wear, which it's like trying to walk on a brick. <laughs> I've got crutches, I've got crutches, but um, actually, do you know what, so it wasn't too bad. After the surgery, I, um, I got a cab home, um, walking, I was walking. Um, actually, because of the pain relief, anaesthetic, the nerve, the nerve block, I had no pain at all. About nine o'clock last night, I started to feel like a throbbing in my foot, it started to get a little bit sore. I uh, had to pop a couple of paracetamol and a codeine and bang, went to bed uh, and actually slept okay, to be honest. Padded my foot up, elevated it. Um, and actually, yeah, so uh, today, like I said, day two, gonna be moving around, seeing how I feel. Um, and then um, I'm gonna be checking in tomorrow because day three, I'm actually at work. So I've got some ice packs that I'm gonna take with me just to make sure the swelling's down as much as I, I can be throughout the day. Um, and um, yeah, but I mean, so far, I mean, I can wiggle my feet. Uh, I, can, I can feel that the foot is quite swollen, but it's to be expected. So yeah, let's keep posted, boom. Uh, bunion surgery update, okay, so I am now post-op day four, okay, um, and uh, I went back to work yesterday, um, and I spent all day on my feet. The only time I used the crutches was when I was sort of going to and from the building, because I wanted uh, people around me not to freaking step on my foot, but actually loading the foot has been really, really easy. I mean, some movements are a little bit uncomfortable, but actually, it's not bad whatsoever. If you look at, I mean, so I'm day four now, and if you look at my feet, I mean, they do look like a car crash, but. So, can you see the toes are purple and all the swellings now coming out, but I've got sort of, look at all that movement, I've got, look at all that movement, yeah? Um, all right, it might not look pretty, but the swelling's really come down, my movement's great, I'm loading my foot really nicely, the, the toe's moving nicely. Um, the doctors gave me a load of antibiotics, so I'm taking these four times a day. I've got to take them on an empty stomach, and I've got to be honest, that is horrible. Um, it's not the nicest. I was also given codeine and paracetamol for pain relief. I stopped taking those day three, because I actually they made me feel a bit queasy, a bit sick. So the pain meds, and I didn't need them really, so I've stopped the pain meds day three, I've got to take the antibiotics, but it's day four, um, and I'm as an osteopath, I've got to do physical therapy techniques. So, I'm gonna show you is a little video I did earlier today of me doing a mobilization and a manipulation just to show you day four how much movement I have in the foot. So um, at the moment, it really does feel good and I can't wait to get the bandage off. Um, I'm going, I'm having a bath at the moment, but I've got to wrap my foot in a, in a, in a bin liner. It's a bit of a pain, but you can't get it wet, so it's what it is. So anyway, check out the video. This is day four, and this is me at work doing some mobilization techniques. Boom. Side bending. Rotation. Rotation into side bending. We can start playing around with the vectors. In a second, we may even come into Extension. So this is the this mobilization. This is the mobilization. Did you see that? That is the manipulation. The two sit together. Yeah? So you'll see how easy it is to move the uh, So we're day four now, post op. Um, good, didn't really use my crutches at all today. No real significant discomfort whatsoever. Um, and if you ever want to know what to do with all those bag for lives you keep saving in the cupboard, well... In order to have a wash, you've got to wrap up your foot in a, in a bag. So that's what I've been doing for the last few nights, just to make sure it doesn't get wet. Cool. So, two weeks, the cuddle goes, okay, so the bandage comes down. And um, it's fairly straightforward, and it can be cut down, and most times uh, I'll just pull the whole thing off comes off as one, and you see this beautiful new foot. Your new foot, okay, so your new tripod, which is the fifth metatarsal head, the first metatarsal head, which isn't out here anymore, it's in here, and then the heel. So you've got this new shape of the foot, which is great, and then you'll see the little cuts. 
So what I want now is deep tissue massage, number one. So lots and lots of massaging through the cuts. The cuts, if you see them as small horizontal cuts, should be massaged through, ideally with your thumb. And what I say, the thumb is pink, press on it till the tip goes white. That's kind of the pressure that I need. Ideally, a healthcare professional can help you. It's not mandatory though, because I want this to be simple for you. At least five times a day, and what I recommend is, an, is a cream that's non-perfumed. So something that's not going to irritate the skin. And it also moisturizes this foot that hasn't really been washed for two weeks and hasn't had the ability to moisturize for two weeks. So lots of dead skin cells. So you can now wash the foot, it's absolutely fine. There'll be a bit of dry blood. I don't want you to scrub it, all right? It's not about getting all the dry blood off in one go. You wash it again and again and again, as you would on a daily basis with simple soap and water, and the rest of the dry blood will come off. The action of washing will help uh, mobilize some of the um, tissue around the foot as well. Uh, and that's the next thing that I want to talk about, which is stretching exercises around the big toe. This is really, really important. So I want you to hold the big toe, which has two joints, a bit like, or two bones, a bit like the, um, the, the thumb, at the bottom, nearer the big toe joint itself. And I want you to be pulling it up for five seconds, holding for five seconds, down for five seconds, holding for five seconds, repeating five times and doing that five times a day. So essentially five sets of five from two weeks up until four weeks, at which point we go from the rule of fives, as I currently call it, to the rule of tens. So it's 10 seconds, 10 times, 10 times a day. The more you get going, the better. I'd be delighted if you could do more earlier. The action of walking on your feet, so loading your feet up, stretches your tissue naturally anyway. So the capsule around the joint, the ligaments around that, they're all stretched up to how they should be. So that actually helps with the mobility and getting your uh, big toe joint moving early. Uh, we are one week post-surgery now, which is great. Um, let's see some of the bruising's coming out. Charles has been amazing. He's been very mobile on his feet, back to um, sport, gym, teaching, life. Okay, this is really crucial. So let's take this off. Uh, I'm just gonna give it a wiggle. Okay, and a little bit of a pull. Yeah, let's see if we can come see. I'm sorry. And you can see there's a bit of uh, dressing on there, like that. That comes off like that. Some simple padding which goes on. Stereo strips now. Now whip these stereo strips off here. So there's no seizures at all. One cut, two cut, three cut, four cut, and five cut. Okay, this is really good. So they're still healing. There's a couple more days left. Like I said, this is one week. But you can see the change of the shape of the foot. This is all. Oops, I'll show you here. This is all now soft and squishy. So that's all. Bone's gone there. That's just swelling coming down. Soft and squidgy space between the toes, okay, which is great. Before they were crossing over, this guy fighting this guy here, which is nice. It, it's spacious, it's a functional procedure, and it's a functional operation for someone with a broad foot here, um, as Charles had, but he's incredibly athletic. He's tried all the techniques to avoid surgery. You can see this swelling here with the bandage and the no bandage, so that's all going to come down. It's all going to be okay. So, a little bit of a redress for another few days. That's just going to be a simple over the top back into shoes, kick okay. So we are day eight, um, post-surgery. I really don't need the, the crutches. The movement is absolutely fantastic. Stabilization work. In fact, which foot did I have the surgery on? Which one? Yeah, can't really tell, right? <laughs> yeah, so uh, I've got to be honest, I'm walking, moving, you can't tell which foot I had surgery. It's crazy, right? Crazy. So what to expect after surgery? Gym, physical activity, what can and can't you do? I'm happy for you to go back to the gym the day after surgery. All right, it's very difficult on the day after surgery. I think it's kind of practically not very uh, advisable because you've had an anesthetic. You need to go home and rest. I think getting that out of your system is crucial. But the day after surgery is perfectly reasonable. You can go on a static bike with your foot being on the pedal, but the middle of the foot rather than the front of the foot. So I don't really want loading of the big toe joint, but with your flat strappy shoe, it'll support your foot and you can get going, get your heart rate up. I think it's important to mix this up. So if you're doing something with your foot down, it could be a weight, be it machine weight, ideally not a free weight with a heavy uh, amount of weight on it, but something that's manageable. Um, then you should then hit the floor and do some floor work as well. Put your foot up nice and high. Remember, the fluid's got to get from your foot back up to your heart, okay? So just allow it to drain back at the same time. But it doesn't mean that you have to stop all gym work. Now, it's not a race to recover. People recover at different rates. And it's not a badge of honor as such. It's more what's quality of life, what's important to you. So I think you should sort of gauge this. I'm happy to have an individual chat about this. 
uh, and we can sort of maybe talk about an individual programme. The shape of the foot, this is after surgery, and this is after the bandage comes down. So the most noticeable thing is the bump's gone, okay, and it's more of a natural curve. That's what I'm aiming to get. I'm not looking for a ruler. I'm not looking for a straight line. If you pick up any pair of shoes, it's a natural curve. That's what I'm trying to recreate for you, which is a natural mechanic of the foot, I hope. So what can you expect in terms of swelling? Generally speaking, there's a gap between the big toe and the second toe, a little V. This isn't permanent. There's a bandage that goes around that area, so it sort of splays it out a little bit more um, than you have before. The other thing to be aware of is that, generally speaking with a bunion, that the other toes are drifted out. Okay, they're on their side. I'm not looking to straighten these. I'm looking to do a practical operation on the first ray. So you may have a small gap. And generally speaking, this closes either with the big toe drifting a little bit or the second toe drift, drifting a little bit so they meet. The other thing is, I'm very much a less is more certain, so I won't operate on the second toe unless I need to. All right? So it could be cocked up in the air, and then I want stretching exercises to bring it down. All right? If it's really cocked up and bent and can't be straightened, that's when actually I think about either shortening the second long bone or the second metatarsal, or maybe taking out the joint here and sticking it straight if needed. But it's not always the case. So ideally, less is more. So get the first ray sorted and leave everything else to bed down. That's kind of crucial. Hello again, guys. Uh, Phil Mark and Singham just here uh, with Giles, as you can see. Uh, Giles is just a foot and a person at the same time. Um, this is week two, so you can see that I'm about to take the final debulk dressings off. So I don't normally do this. It's normally the bandage stays on or the cuddle that stays on for two weeks. But um, we debulked it to see how Giles could go. And here we go. So, come up and come up. So we've got there one, two, three. There's a bit of dried blood around it four and five, a little bit more dried blood around there. So that's really nice, and um, Giles kind of got his other foot out so you can see what's happening there. Um, so you can see a pre-op and a post-op. I'm gonna get you to stand up for me because that's really good to see. There is expectedly um, still swelling, and you can see that it's quite red there. Um, that's perfectly normal, there's lots of blood doing lots of good healing stuff. You can see if I get down here, bump, squidgy and soft, big and round. Fighting toes, no longer fighting. Shoe shapes, big projection into shoes. So there we go. <laughs> so, foot, and I don't know if you can see it, but um, so these are the actual key, keyhole surgical marks. And this is my movement as I sort of go through like a gait cycle. So you'll see this is two weeks post-op, right? So, good solid plant, down, take a nice step and now I come up onto my toe, toe, good, 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 no drama, no drama, no drama, no drama. Now I start to feel it in my big toe. That's a little uncomfortable but not painful. So I get to about here and that's me. Um, not really painful at all. I sort of come slightly up uh, and like I said, at that very end stage, um, it sort of became a little bit uncomfortable, but so now it's all about sort of soft tissue work, reducing the swelling, scar work, and just getting some movement through that bad boy. Boom. So we're sort of two and a half weeks post-surgery, um, and this is what I've been doing for my sort of daily rehab. Um, I mean, I'm hitting the gym every day, right? And I'm doing loads of single leg exercises, bilateral exercises, doing body weight squats. I'm doing hip thrusts. I'm looking at stabilization exercises for my pelvis uh, because this is my uh, operated foot. As you can see, it's still a bit swollen. So I've been obviously pushing off onto my good side for the last couple of weeks. So I'm trying to sort of minimize any sort of musculoskeletal dysfunction that may be pushing off onto, onto the good side. Um, so this is my sort of routine that I tend to do pretty much daily and it's 15, 20 minutes. It's pretty quick. Uh, I'm just gonna sort of go through it now 
um, and then you'll sort of see what I'm doing. I'm gonna do soft tissue work, generalized massage therapy to the uh, gastroxylaire, so sort of the lower leg, into the plantar fascia. Then I'm gonna start doing what we call mobilization techniques. I'm just gonna basically start moving the foot around because we've got 26 bones, 28 with the sesamoids, in the foot, 33 joints. Um, and I want to basically start mobilising sort of navicular, cuboid, midfoot, ankle, get some really good movement through it. Then I'm going to start using a little bit of um, massage wax just to work into the soft tissue. And then I'm going to be using some instrument assisted techniques. Now this is based on gua sha, but you can use anything really. Um, and this is going to be for the scar work. So I'm going to show you how I would do that as well. So I'm going to try and fast time it all. So you'll see me sort of doing my uh, my sort of daily rehab pretty much uh, now. Boom. <laughs> Get back to the gym, it's really important. If you like it, if you don't get to the gym, don't. But if you like playing golf, for example, get back to the golf course. If you like playing tennis, have a little knock up. It's fine, you don't need to load the front of the foot, okay? If you wanna get back to golf, do a few holes, do a bit of pitch and putt, it's really, really important. Um, quality of life is crucial for this. Driving, okay? So if we're doing your left foot, then you've got an automatic car. I don't mind as long as there's a discussion with your insurance company if you go back to down after surgery. If it's your right foot, you've really got to come out of the bandage. I think that's really important for safety. And then again, it's a discussion with the insurance company, but I want you to be walking and doing normal activities. So I don't mind if you go back to driving, providing you feel safe and there's that discussion with your insurance company, okay? <laughs>
Hey guys, so a little update for you. I'm now week three post-surgery and have a little look at this bad boy. So this is the foot, the scars. So like really hardly visible. I'm doing lots of soft tissue work, lots of sort of moisturizing of the scars and scar. Uh, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you my sort of toe flexibility. So I've been doing loads of like stretching work throughout the toe over the last few weeks. So this is week three, looking at flexibility of the toe. So you'll be able to see me plant down, take a step, and then I sort of come up. So look at that, already I'm right up there from where I was last time. No problems at all. Nice step forward, and you can see now me pushing off. Look at that, man. Look at that, look at that, look at that. No pain, no pain, no problems, no problems, no problems. Easy peasy. Stability's really good. I'm doing a lot of static movements, a load of split squats. You can see how I can load through already. Coming right up. Heel and then almost onto like push off. So you can see, really, really nice. But what's great about this is you can see how sort of reduced the scars are, man. Still a little bit of swelling over the lateral aspect of the foot. So, well, on this sort of portion. So I'm icing it loads, just lots of ice, ice, ice. Easy peasy, boom. What do you expect at four weeks? I'm gonna see you at four weeks, I see you at, uh, on the day of surgery, see you before surgery, I think. Uh, two weeks and four weeks. At four weeks, you'll have a little bit of a swelling foot. The toes are not gonna drift back, so please don't worry about that. The swelling, as I said, is natural and it's predictable because the bones are still healing. But the movement's going to be increased because you're gonna be doing your exercises. That's really, really important to a good and speedy recovery. What else am I gonna see? The four week appointment is really me being a bit of a headmaster to check you've done your homework. And by that I mean, have you done the deep tissue massage over the scars? Are they as mobile and supple as they could be? Of the five cuts, two of them melt away virtually immediately. Of the three remaining cuts, there's often one, maybe two, that can be a little bit sticky and needs a little bit more work. The earlier you get to this, i.e. as soon as that bandage comes down, a day or two after, if the wounds need to finally dry off, then you, the less stickiness they have essentially, they mobilize quite nicely. Why is that important? Because essentially my entry points are spot points. So all of the tissue sticks down, a bit like a big cut with the whole thing sticking down. These are small spot points here. The movement is crucial. So the quicker you move this, the more movement you have in the big toe joint because there's little points that are sticking suddenly disappear. They will go, but if you do the massage early, they won't take as long to disappear. Week four now post-op. So it's been a fantastic recovery. Honestly, I've almost forgotten that I've actually had surgery. My daily, I mean, I'm running, I'm moving, I'm training. Um, it's actually really, I keep forgetting I have had surgery. So I'm gonna show you my foot and, and you can see sort of where the scars are based and I'm gonna show you my movement. Check it so out. So mind my skanky foot, uh, but these are two scars. Can hardly see those bad boys. Um, and these are the three scars sort of remaining on top. Now, it's still a tiny bit sort of swollen, but nothing like it was. I'm, I'm in back into normal shoes, absolutely no drama at all. And I'm sort of doing some sort of fascial work to try and sort of loosen these up. But to be fair, the skin around it, no problems whatsoever. And this is the movement. Uh, I'm going to show you some sort of plantar flexion, dorsal flexion bilaterally, so with both feet. Then I'm going to show you my movement with just the uh, post-surgical toe, so you can have a little look. So remember guys, this is literally bang on week four, all right? And, and ironically, the bone is still broken, but <laughs> like I said, I keep forgetting that my foot's even had surgery. So here we go. Bilateral one. See, no problems at all. Now, if I was to take a step forwards, 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 move, 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 up, 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 up. Look at that, man, look at that. What I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna load, load the foot. So again, you can see I'm gonna load it single leg. So almost like, spit, uh, like a pistol squat. 
So this is one foot loaded. That's really bad stability, but look at that. No pain, no discomfort. Easy, yeah? Crazy. So there you go. That is my full surgery. So it's been a couple of months. Pain-free, back to training. Do you know what, I've got to be honest, I have to remind myself sometimes that I've even had surgery. So if you've got any issues at all, contact Dr. Kunasingham. He's always happy to have a chat. Can't recommend him highly enough. Boom. Thank you.